hello there. I am Taylor, and you are listening to the Surviving Maine podcast deep dive interview series. Uh, about, uh, well, over a year ago now, I spoke with most of the cast of Surviving Maine season four just weeks after they played the game. So these interviews are untainted by the edited show. It's just how each player remembers their game, what was important to them, what were their favorite moments, what are their regrets. These interviews I've been doing since season two, and they are just kind of a way for the players to have a cathartic expression of their game without having had to see themselves on screen. So my sixth interview is with a player who was very fun to watch, Lauren. Lauren, so good to meet you. How are you? Hey, Taylor. I'm doing great. Much better now that I'm out of the woods and away from ticks, Uh, but (laughs) doing great. So I didn't get to interview you before the game of all the the whole cast I I interviewed, but um, George had to interview you because our schedules didn't align. And that was sad because we have some mutual friends um, uh, like Melanie, who was actually supposed to play Surviving Maine this season. Did you know that? Oh, I actually, you know what? She didn't tell me, sneaky <laughs> Melanie. Good, that's uh, good no, of yeah, her. But we, <laughs> but we, we skateboard together, um, and she's just like an awesome get women to do cool shit type of person, and uh, always here for that. Yes, yes, she is, and I also went skateboarding with her in in Philly. So yeah, oh, cool, nice. cool. Um, uh, okay, Lauren. So. Let's talk about your game, which was a roller coaster uh, of emotions and experiences, I'm sure. Um, to say the least, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we start with when you arrived at the location and like what happened and what were you thinking? Yeah. So when I first got there, you know, a lot of it's sizing up uh, who everyone else is coming, you know, walking in, sitting down. Uh, dis- discerning that there are three starting tribes and knowing that, you know, we're probably going to be in smaller groups to start. Um, honestly, I was just really excited and probably oddly calm. Um, I-, I actually wasn't as nervous as I thought I was going to be once I got there. And I was like, you know what? I can camp. Uh, I've played an LRG before. And honestly, this time it was my birthday weekend. I was kind of just here to have fun. And I know that people say that when they don't win, but I, I truly, even if you entered me, interviewed me before uh, the game happened, I really, this time was just there to have fun and honestly, fuck some shit up. I, okay. I self-proclaimed villain coming in. Okay. Okay. So you thought going in like, mm, maybe I'll be a villain. It'll be fun. It, it wasn't even maybe. I think I said it in my like day of pre-confessional, like, I am here to be a villain. Um, And what that does is one, it protects my feelings because if I'm just like not truly myself, people can say all the shit they want. I was being my, my worst self. So it's okay. Um, But also it's entertainment. I like being entertained. I like entertaining. No one wants big group votes. So I came in just with the mentality of like, I'm just going to ruin people's games. And I, you know, I think it's safe to say I accomplished that. Wow. 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 Okay. Well, I can't wait to hear more about this. Um, okay. Wait. Oh no. I had a question. See, I talk too much. This is, we're already getting into <laughs> no, this I, happens, I derail. This happens with everyone. It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. So you get there. You're When you see that, that it's three tribes instead of two, were you like, um, were you scared? I personally, I would be like, oh, fuck, like this, this, uh, raises my chances of being the first one out basically, you know? Yeah, that definitely is kind of the first thought, but honestly, and this might, I might sound a little cocky, but I don't (laughs) think I have like first boot energy. I'm talkative enough. I'm personable. I'm of 
a reasonable age. I'm not too young for the cast. I'm not too old. I, I can hold a conversation. I like to think I know when to shut up, but I actually don't think that that's the case. <laughs> um, and I'm competent in challenges. Um, I was helpful around camp. So I actually was pretty confident in not being the first boot of the game or on my starting tribe. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely was more nervous for the three tribe format of like, there's no room to strategize without looking like you're strategizing is for me, the bigger thing. Like you pull one person aside or you're in a conversation with two people. There's only a few other people you could be talking about. Yeah. And so it kind of just limits your mobility in the game, but I, I definitely wasn't like scared of being the first boot in a smaller tribe. Okay. How did you navigate that then? And, and you know, if I'm jumping ahead. Oh, you're good. <laughs> stop me. But how did you navigate the strategizing with people? So I didn't. Um, <laughs> and I think this foreshadows my imminent demise on the, the swap tribe. Um, but I, truly what happened um, was original Sebago did not lose. We lost one reward challenge. And of course, this was the reward challenge where they got to pick the journey people. So we'll get back to that. Yeah. Of course, that one we lost and that screwed <laughs> me over. Um, but so we didn't lose. We were Sebago strong and there was no reason to strategize. And my biggest fear coming into the game from my own personality standpoint is I'm like a full tilt, that's why I decided to be a villain type person. And I really held myself back from mm. talking to everyone, being the first to put out names. And what I noticed was, you know, Seth and Maddie were kind of the outcasts in our original Sebago tribe, just from like the optics and the way conversations were happening. And when we'd be walking from camp to go to the bathroom or to go to a challenge, it was Zach, Adam, and Sandra walking very slow, talking very quiet. And I didn't want to automatically ostracize or isolate Maddie and Seth mm -hmm. and be with that group of three. But I also didn't want to be with Maddie and Seth and be talked about by that group of three. So I found myself kind of in the middle um, and that was definitely difficult for me. And I ended up really not strategizing with anyone. And by the time I had a chance to pull Sandra aside and be like, Hey, us ladies should stick together. She had already been talking with Zach and Adam and anything I put in her ear, ear about either of them got back to them. And, you know, I think some of my Zach comments are what sealed the deal on me ending up on a swap tribe with just Zach from original Sebago. So what can I, you explain that or are you, will you get yeah. to it later? Um, maybe we'll get to it later. Cause I do want to talk about my journey because that yeah. I think also plays into my original tribe dynamics and kind of screwed me over. Mm -hmm. Um, so, of course, the one reward challenge we lose, we come in first for all the other ones, <laughs> is the one where the winning tribe gets to pick from each tribe who goes on the journey. And I was so kind as to give Mary from Flagstaff my inhaler after That's one right. of the first challenges. <laughs> and um, fuck me for being nice, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm the lucky winner of getting chosen to go on this journey because I was kind to Mary, Mary doesn't know Survivor and thought this was a gift to me uh, for being yes. so kind. Yeah. Uh, so just let someone have an asthma attack next time. I guess. <laughs> no, just kidding. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> um, so we go on this journey and before the journey even starts, you, or like we're segregated and I'm asking, it's, it's Aaron and Mary, both two people who visually don't look like they watch Survivor or would play a live reality game. And I was yeah. like, fantastic. This is going to be <laughs> a risk or protect. And they don't understand how a prisoner's dilemma works. Yeah. <laughs> so before we even get to that, I ask them and they're both like, oh, risk, I'm here to play. So yeah. <laughs> before I even knew what was up for grabs, I knew that I was protecting my vote. 
So, you know, we go up, um, I go up last and you have the decision to risk or protect. And um, I decided to protect for a few reasons. The obvious one being, I didn't want to have to lie to my tribe. I didn't want to win anything. I didn't want to lose my vote. Um, and if I just didn't risk, I had no, there was no downside to me telling the total truth. Um, mm -hmm. And as much as I like to think I'm a good liar, um, not when there's other people's stories involved. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, protect. Uh, but also, if all three of us risked our vote and played in the mini challenge, one person ends neutral and that while one person wins the advantage and one person loses their vote. And I went, I can guarantee myself I get to keep my vote and nothing happens. And one of them 100% loses their vote. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what better time to start the villain shit than <laughs> make sure one of these people are going back without their vote. Um, and Mary was very much not happy when she found out that was yeah, my yeah. decision. Poor Mary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all of that kind of backs into we were gone from our tribes for three hours. Yeah, it was some production logistics. Um, and this was like the longest I think anyone was away from their tribe all weekend. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I knew that I was screwed. We didn't lose any immunity challenges. I was away for three hours. I hadn't talked strategy with any of them. So that kind of all leads up to the swap. And uh, I just kind of felt very, you know, underprepared um, in terms of connections with my tribe mates um, and especially Zach, the one person I didn't want to end up on the swap tribe with. So, okay. So before we get to that, that first night then, because um, the swap happens in the middle of day two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you... Do you, like, tell me what you tried to do to remedy the that whole being away for three hours situation. Uh, what did you that night? Did you try to talk to people? Yeah, actually, I'm I'm glad you uh, brought that up. So, I did get in the morning a chance to talk to Sandra, um, Maddie, and Zach, and Adam had gone off, and Seth was snoring very loudly, so we knew he was <laughs> asleep. And I essentially brought up to Sandra like. Hey, um, if anything happens, uh, you know, I really at least don't want the first one of us to go to be a woman. I have no opinion on the three men. So I just want to let you know that you'll not be an, you won't be a name coming out of my mouth. Neither will Maddie. And I hope that we can, the three of us just bring one of the men on to vote another off. Mm -hmm. um, and that felt very genuine, that conversation with Sandra. And I felt like, she is a loyal player and the vibe I got from her was like, she would do woman strong. She would be loyal to original Sebago for a while. So I felt good with that. And I felt like I had a bit of a footing to kind of potentially break up the Zach, Adam, Sandra whisperings. And then the other thing, which I forgot about on my journey when Mary went up and was doing her 15 minutes of puzzle hell, um, Seth, uh, Aaron and I had a chance to talk. And I already asked him once if he knew Seth. They're just, you know, cut from the same cloth. They both <laughs> said they were treasure hunters. I was right. like, there's no way you two don't know each other. <laughs> and so I asked him twice and then I, I, you know, took my foot off the gas. I was like, I won't bother this man. And when Mary goes up, uh, to do the puzzle. He's like, uh, yeah, you got me. I know Seth. We've been friends for 20 years. And he starts Shit. telling me all these things about how he, you know, does YouTube videos and, you know, how close him and Seth are. And so I don't remember if it was the night or the morning. It was probably the next day in the morning. I had like two seconds with Seth alone. And I was like, just so you know, Aaron told me about you guys in confidence. I really want you, me, and Aaron to work together if we all make it to a point where we can. Perfect. Uh, okay. And I feel like that really solidified my bonds with Seth. He's such a wholesome dad figure, sweet, <laughs> sweet man. Yeah. And he definitely 
played a, a loyal game. And so I knew just that early connection with Seth was going to be really great to have. Um, so that was super beneficial. And then I also let him know that I know Dave personally. Um, we played Survivor Philly together. Dave was on original yeah. flag staff. Yes. Yes. And I let him and Aaron know. And I was like, the four of us can like link up later. Uh <laughs> I didn't know how wrong I could possibly be on that one. <laughs> um, but that was kind of my initial intent. And so I feel like between Sandra and Seth, I had talked to each side of the, you know, two halves of the tribe. And I felt pretty okay, better than I had day one. Um, okay. Coming back from the journey for sure. Okay, good. And then it all falls apart. <laughs> yes, to say the very least yes <laughs> so the swap happens and it's like a random draw right you're drawing buffs mm -hmm. um and who did you end up with so well I guess before the draw we, sure. we all know swap is coming and I see George and Liza and I forget who the third production member was huddling around the table very uh conspicuously uh -oh. and I hear Liza say go and I, I knew that they were going to be revealing something. And there's a bag dangling, very clearly an idol or an advantage of sorts from Liza's like production table. And Maddie was walking up to return the idol. And I, I learned er, very early on, don't be the one to grab the public advantage. That's <laughs> not a benefit usually. Um, so I was like, Maddie, go get it when you go hand in the immunity. And she like tries to pull it down, but I guess it was hooked, not taped and didn't get it. And so a, a big flop, I think, I don't know who saw that attempt, but I was like, get it at that point. Um, so Maddie doesn't get it. We do the random draw. It's still hanging there. Um, and we realize we reveal we're swapping to two tribes from three to two. Um, so Sebago and Moosehead are the two new tribes. And we noticed that Zach and I are the only two with original Sebago buffs. And so Zach goes and grabs the idol because we were whispering whichever tribe split ends up with um, a deficit in Sebago, they go grab the hidden immunity idol. So Zach has an idol. I'm on a swap tribe with Zach. Then I get super excited. I see Dave come over and I was like, yay, a friend, someone I can trust, someone I can like, I know, go and full tilt, play strategy, and we can have a good conversation. I see Allison and Callie. Uh, oh, go Did you, um, were you in like in an alliance with Dave in Survivor Philly? No, actually, okay. in, in Survivor Philly, we came, we were on swap tribes, never went to tribal on the swap tribe went to merge and we just like didn't have it it was a one day game so yeah two rounds is not enough to foster a, a new relationship um he went back to his original tribe and i messed myself up but anywho um, okay. <laughs> we we were not previously allies um but we had talked in great length about how we would have loved to have played together so mm. the opportunity to play with him I was super excited that we managed to be on the swap tribe together. And then he came over with Allison from original Flagstaff. And I went, yes, another lady. And then from, we had three moose heads. We had Topher, Nick, and Callie. And I was like, yes, another lady. So I felt good about the ratio there. Um, and I felt like if Dave feels good with Allison and Zach and I can manage to at least hold out if we need to, we have four of, you know, the votes. Um, we have the majority. So that was my initial swap division thinking. I actually didn't feel too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but the moment you don't feel like something's going to go <laughs> to shit, it does. <laughs> yeah. So what happened? So we win the first immunity challenge. Everything's great. We have a handful of hours at camp. And... Um, we come back and Sebago had held strong on the other tribe because they had the majority four, three. 
and they voted out and it was Shaley. So mm-hmm. feeling good. We're still Sebago strong. Um, although to be honest, I really was hoping they would have flipped and that would have given me a bit of cushion because I knew have being the only tribe with six original members was not a positive. And especially not for the type of game I was trying to play. I was trying to be a villain. I don't <laughs> want to be lumped with this majority of people who just run the game. Um, so then we lose the second immunity challenge. And another thing is that the last day and a half, it's been two hours of strategy, an hour of tribal, you know, sitting at original Sebago, chit-chatting. Um, I made them do this riddle that everyone hates me for. <laughs> um, they were all sick of me at camp in hopefully a fun way. And now we fi- I finally lose. This is my first strategy session, first tribal. And we get like production is like, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I recommend strategizing quickly. And I was like, well, great. This is going to be a quick round. And it's my first round. Um, turns out it was my only round. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I guess my initial in the moment, what happened, obviously we all go to our original tribe members talk first, and then we, we cross tribe. So I'm talking to Zach and he goes, I'm going to talk to the moose heads. You talk to the flag staffs. Let's see if we hear each other's names, report back, see what the word is. Um, my dumbass goes, yay. That means I talked to Dave, not, oh, that means Zach talks to three people and I <laughs> talked to two. Yeah. Uh, I didn't trust Zach. Um, in my mind, I personify Zach as a weasel, <laughs> um, <laughs> not in a mean way. I was also playing a Weasley game. Yeah. Um, weasel vibes, Zach. Um, <laughs> so I go to Dave and Allison and I'm like, and I truly meant it, but I was like, I, I'll go for Zach. I know we're at the bottom. You guys let me know. Zach says the same shit. Um, but I didn't know that. We come back to each other and we're like, I put your name out there and no one took the bait. I think we're good. Um, and Zach was like, if you want me to play the idol, like, let me know. But I think we're good. I think yeah. we're somehow the swing vote. Like, I mean, props to them for lying. All of Moosehead is like, Dave, Dave, Dave's my guy. Dave's my friend. So I go to Dave and I say, don't worry. Moosehead wants to put the votes on you, but I have Zach. And that makes four of us. So you're going to probably get three votes, but don't worry. You're good. And Dave is even like, oh, thank you. And if I go out, you know, just so you know, I won't blow up your game or anything. At this point, Dave knows I'm the name. So (laughs) so when I get blindsided, truly blindsided, um, you know, I was willing to do the same to Zach. And really anyone else there. Um, but what really hurt is like when it's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> that sucked. It was my first round I got to play. Um, and I really came in thinking like I spent $400 and drove eight hours up here to play this game with Dave <laughs> and he's going to lie to me. And I was like near tears. I was hungry. I was tired. Um, I was mad that it was at night. Cause I was like, I don't, I can't even go shower or change my, like, I'm just going to go to bed in the woods again. Um, and so in my like final confessional, um, for that vote, I was near tears. And I honestly, I think I said something along the lines of like, that felt really personal. I was like, I don't know what I did wrong. I really tried to like, not be too much. Cause I feel like personally, that's an attribute or a descriptor that hurts my feelings and that I get a lot. So yeah, I was that like, you're too much. That I'm too much. I talk too much. I'm too loud. I'm, you know, all those things that you'd think would be positive, but <laughs> somehow aren't. And so I was like in tears. I don't know if I actually cried, but I was really close to if I didn't. And I was just like, did I do something? Was I just that annoying that? 
the vote flipped because at that point I really thought like I had Allison and Dave at least on Topher or at least Dave. Um, And then my mind starts going, Dave, I literally told Dave he was getting three votes and he couldn't at least be, hey, it's you. I can't do anything about it. Play your shot in the dark. Like at the very least as a friend could have been, (laughs) I'm not going to sacrifice my own game for you. You're the name, but like, I hope this works out for you. And so I personally felt very hurt in that moment. Um, and so that round was not, was not really great for me. (laughs) So, okay. So you get voted out at night, um, and then you're surprised by mm-hmm. having this second chance. And what are you thinking when they say this to you? Like you can, you can choose to go to exile. Yeah. So when I like get to the little table with the note, I thought in this whole time I'd been telling everyone, there's no way someone can get six shot in the darks. They have to be willing then. <laughs> and I also don't say that when you're voted out of the game, they become powerless. So I was like, so something happens to them after you're voted out of the game. I'm going to will my shot in the dark as like George beckons me over to this parchment on this table. And I'm like trying to get my shot in the dark out, like all in the way, like who am I even going to give this to? And then it says exile. And I'm like, holy shit. And I, you know, it doesn't take much of a thought to just be like, yes, especially I have a huge vendetta now. I'm like, (laughs) if you thought I wanted to play a villain game before (laughs) this happened, like, this is my origin story. (laughs) I'm ready. Uh, So really, there was no hesitation. And then my first thought is, I don't know if this is just the lucky round and I'm the person who was fortunate enough to get voted out this round and go to exile and come back in the game. Um, And so I honestly, I thought my first thought was, yes, I want to go make a campfire alone and (laughs) cry to myself tonight. Um, I will be alone and I can formulate my master plan and I can cry. Um, No such luck. (laughs) No such luck, but I still had a great time on exile. Good. Uh, I heard your reception there maybe wasn't, they weren't as happy to see you as oh. they were. <laughs> oh, <no>. Never mind. <laughs> they weren't happy to see me. <laughs> oh my okay. gosh. Here's what, so it's like Mary's the first one and then Kiefer shows up like that's from Mary's tribe. And so there was hugs and laughter and then Shaylee shows up also from their original tribe, hugs and laughter. And then you show up and they're like, oh, hi. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is an accurate recounting of the events that took place. So, (laughs) I mean, I don't know if they were happy as Sebago went or like I had, you know what it could have been? So Miss Mary, um, (laughs) she is an enigma. Um, (laughs) So... You know, I was obviously on the journey with Mary and Aaron and okay, they would not shut the hell up about cutting animals and hunting and and he ate a worm, Aaron ate it and she was, Mary was picking wild carrots and I was like, this is just not my group of people. (laughs) Like, not that I'm not going to try, but we very clearly are not from similar walks of life and- (laughs) When I come to exile, Mary is very blunt and she didn't say all of this right away. Um, But she tells me that I talk a lot and that she, when she was retelling the journey story to her original Flagstaff tribe, that the one thing she told them about me is that I talk a lot. So fantastic. Thank you, Mary. Um, And I was like, girl, you and Aaron spent two hours talking about killing animals. And you're going to say, I talk, I sat there not engaging. Do not even try with me. Um, <laughs> but then also I remember day, day two, the next day, um, morning at exile, Mary said, you know, you're so smart. She's like, it really surprises me. She said, I didn't think you had an IQ. <laughs> <laughs> she said that. 
She literally, she literally said she was shocked I have an IQ. <laughs> and I was like, and she's like, oh, you know, you're like young and you talk a lot. And I oh, was like, she- great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you know what? Actually, it doesn't surprise me that like if Mary was there being like, ah. also, she was very mad at me that I did not play because she auto lost that yeah. puzzle on the journey. So, I guess I get where Mary was coming from, but okay. Yes. I wouldn't say it wasn't a warm welcome. It, (laughs) we talked and we, you know, I let them know what happened and we all told our own stories and there was no like bad blood, but it's funny that it was Mary the ream of the season. Um, yes, you know, (laughs) Mary is. (laughs) She, (laughs) Oh my God. And I've never been like so polarized by a person like because you just, do I love her? Do I hate her? Like, (laughs) is this game? It's definitely not game. Do I take it personally? No clue. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. So honestly, I had a great night at exile though. Like they made room for me in their little shelter. They showed me the, the poop bucket. Like, it was we, we sat around the campfire for a bit it it really was and then the next day morning at exile was fun i i enjoyed all of their presence nice okay <laughs> um well, so what happens after that are you met because madison gets voted out and does not stay yes which no. apparently that happened at like one in the morning yeah um and so we thought someone was coming after me um, and then went to bed and we kept like being like, voices, is someone <laughs> coming? And it was just like a truck driving by. Um, but yeah, so Madison didn't come and we then, we were at exile for hours. Like we had to have gotten up at like six or seven <clears throat> with the sunrise, maybe earlier. And it wasn't until like 11 p.m., or a.m., geez, 11 a.m., that uh, production walks over and we hear, like, the next voice of the next arrival, and it's Sandra, and Shaylee was not happy that it was Sandra because Sandra did her dirty on the Swap yes. Tribe. Yes. Um, but essentially, Sandra came, recounted what had happened, let us know about Maddie, um, Seth failing the fire making, um, oh, yeah. and all of the, like, Sebago flipping and... Sandra was like, don't trust Seth, um, and, you know, <laughs> putting all this stuff in our, our ears. And I mean, we all did that. Mm-hmm. Um, and was also saying um, how, like, you, you know, I can trust Adam if I get back in the game and um, going through all of that stuff. And essentially, we were there for maybe like 10 minutes while Sandra was there just getting the information. And we could sense, I think we were at 10 at that point. So we were like, we know that we're up next, Mm -hmm. whatever we're doing. And I said, would all of you guys mind putting all of your shot in the darks in one bag? Because I was like, only one of us are getting back in. There's Mm -hmm. no downside to us sharing all of our information and sharing our shot in the darks. And we're going to be a target, whoever comes back in. So let's just give them all the things. So Shaylee had used hers already um, but so between the five of us, we had four shot in the darks. And so we placed those in a little bag and then production was like, all right, it's time to go. Uh, so left exile for the last time, which honestly, that was probably my best time in the game was <laughs> exile. I, I had a great time with them. It was really fun. That's awesome. Uh, that's what they all said too. It's it really, yeah. yeah. It was the camp was great. Mm-hmm. You're like out. You can talk strategy and you can decompress from the game, yeah. but like you know, you still have a chance. It's like this really great sweet spot of getting to decompress, but also like you're still in it. You can still play the game. So you then, uh, go like kind of high crouch in the woods <laughs> while the fucking rest of the people play a challenge i and i heard you had a bit of trouble with that <laughs> um i you know what this honestly i will say even having not won 
I loved this experience because I got every ounce of experience you could ever want out of Survivor, right? Like uh, I managed a swap. I slept outside. I survived off of little food. I went to exile. I got to play like a battle back, um, which, and maybe this is skipping a bit, but win individual immunity, technically I count it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so as traumatizing as this story I'm about to recount is, um, (laughs) I honestly, um, this is probably the proudest moment I felt. And this is like the realest any of these games have felt. And I just love this moment for myself. Um, (laughs) And it really helps with my anti-hero story. So hopefully that, you know, (laughs) throw that storyline in there. Um, Because I was the one person they didn't want to come back into the game and that honestly crowning crowning moment for me um but yeah so they put us in this you couldn't even call it a clearing section of the woods um there were five of us on exile plus a production member so there are six of us and there's barely enough room for all of our feet and all of our starting tribe colors are teal blue uh sandra's got a bright red boston red Sox hat on yeah. and they're like <laughs> We can see you through the trees. You have to <laughs> duck, but there's no room to like comfortably crouch. Um, so that's the first thing. There's like no room. Um, it's also like one of the hottest days. Um, I'm now on day three of having not eaten. We had no food at Exile. And we also hadn't really moved around or anything too crazy for like several hours at mm-hmm. Exile. And so when we were walking to the field where they were having all of us exile people hide, I felt very like for the first time, the physical elements hit me. And I was like, I feel lightheaded. I feel hungry. I was like, I don't feel good. Um, And so we get into this clearing and they tell us to crouch. And that's the first thing. It's tiny. And there's ticks everywhere like you couldn't look at a person without seeing like two ticks on them yeah and that was I think the thing I hated the most about the weekend was the ticks (laughs) ticks, and so to to now be forced into this space where the grass was overgrown there's low-hanging branches and bushes and it's just they're like crawling all over Mary's um sleeping bag and it's like right in my face and I'm Mm. staring at ticks like two inches from my face and I'm like please God help me. Um, so we think we just have to wait for the tribes to come in. Wise is going to call us out and we're going to do the buyback first. Then right. after waiting, like what felt like 20 minutes, it might've been 20 minutes for the tribes to even enter. Um, then Liza starts explaining the challenge and we all look at each other and go, are you kidding me? They're mm-hmm. running the they go through drop your buffs we're at merge we're doing the murgatory like explaining all the rules explaining the challenge running the challenge and I was like it just hit me that I was going to be in there for another like 20 minutes and it was hot and I felt like I was going to throw up and there were ticks everywhere and I got so claustrophobic and I also didn't get my cry session from the night before, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, um, I hated that. And I, man, I don't know. I, I have anxiety. I get anxiety attacks, usually about stupid boys um, <laughs> and my mom. But uh, I, it just like all hit me and I just couldn't stop crying. Uh, I needed to take my inhaler. Um, I like, I, I just was having a full blown anxiety attack. And I was like, very close to stepping out of there and being like, I don't even want to participate in the buyback challenge. Let me go shower and go home. You know, I was maybe like another 10 minutes in there and I would have just been done. Um, So yes, I had a little mental episode, a little break. (laughs) Um, And I think the worst part about that for me was when we had to walk out. So they had told us when you guys walk out, walk out stoic and like you're a united tribe and, you know, be like really confident. And I was like, don't look at me. (laughs) I was like, 
<laughs> and these people had no idea why I was crying. So I was like, you probably think like I'm crying because I don't want to like see you guys again. But <laughs> it was really because I was covered in ticks and felt like I was going to be sick. So <laughs> wow. Don't look at me. Oh, wow. So, um, okay. So somehow you use that mental breakdown to power your way through this challenge. Yes. Well, actually, you know, if it was any other challenge, I don't know if the outcome would have been the same. When I saw this was the challenge, I was as thrilled as you could be during a mental uh, yeah. breakdown. Um, have, you, have you practiced it? No. I, I don't even know. There's the only people I know who have recreated it. Yeah. Um, but watching Survivor, I'm like, this has always been one of those challenges where you're like, I can do this. But you never know if you actually can do it until you try it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it suits my skills. Um, and I just always, always wanted to try it dream challenge. And so okay. that put a little pep in my step. Cool. And also George is a dear friend of mine from this community. Aww. And I like, we had drawn for spots. I picked my spot. Um, and I just like had to go like, get a sip of water before we started. So like everyone was ready to go and I had to like walk away quickly. And George comes and grabs me by the arms and he's like, Lauren, <laughs> if you have even 10% left in you, you know, you've got to give it your all. He's like, I know you can do this challenge. This is the first time elements are getting to you. You're just going to have to power through it. And then he like gave me the best hug ever, which made me cry more. Yeah. Because show me affection I cry even more same same girl yeah <laughs> thanks George yeah. um and I just was like honestly shaking and I just was like all right I really want to do this challenge and that was my saving grace it was George's pep talk but it was mostly just that this happens to be probably the only challenge that I would have been excited at that point to play mm -hmm. um and it was really just like go slow. Other people are going to drop. Yeah. And that's what happened. I know Kiefer was ahead of me and then he dropped and then he was catching up to me really quick. And then Sandra caught up to me and I was like, I know I'm ahead enough where they feel like they have to rush. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is not rush. And I didn't drop once. Nice. And I got back to the table. And the second Liza said, I won, I like just dropped to the ground and all my exile friends came and hugged me. And for as many candid, mean things that Mary said to me, you know, she came up and gave me the biggest hug and was Aww. like, I'm so proud of you, buddy. And it just was like the sweetest moment I could have asked for. Um, and I left with a machete, a tarp, which I didn't even get to use at night, but whatever. <laughs> and four shot in the dark. Yes. So I was like, I made out like a bandit. <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah and and the fact that like i knew six out of the 10 people who i was joining were mad that i just won oh that was the best part mm -hmm. truly and that i think that also fueled me where i was like i am the single person that they are all like anyone but her like, <laughs> exactly who i want to be <laughs> yes yes I love revenge. It tastes so good. So much better uh, than anything. So good. That's, you know what? <laughs> so when I got back in, I was like balls to the wall. I don't, I, I already wanted to be a villain. And at that point I was already voted out once I had already processed things. And at that point I was just there for entertainment. Like mm -hmm. I, I think I, entertainment. Yes. Both, <laughs> both. I definitely wanted to be entertained by my own doings, but yeah. I was like, I already have the best story arc. I like <laughs> am the one person who shouldn't have gotten back in, but did. And I had my crying moment and I was like, now I can just be an absolute menace. <laughs> so what happens? I know who goes out next at this merge who, uh, by the way, who won, um, um, immunity before you all the merge. It? Yeah. It was all of my Sebago, um, so it was Zach, Adam, and Seth. They all oh. they all won what? in the Murgatory. Oh, okay. So it was like, I don't even know what this challenge oh. was. 
Yes. It's the like topply table. Okay. Well, I know that. But how oh. did, and how did they do it? it? Well, when they, I was having an anxiety attack covered in ticks. <laughs> um, they ran it where all 10 of them played it at once. And the first five to finish earned the merge got the merge feast and were safe at tribal council gotcha. and the other five were eligible to be voted out. And then I came in as the sixth safe person. Okay. So it was all of my original Sebago, unfortunately, Zach, Adam, and then Seth. <laughs> and then it was Nick and Callie. Um, so that's a huge portion of the, um, swap Sebago because they were both with me, Zach. Oh, and then Allison too. So it was all of the original Sebago and then all of the swap Sebago. Um, so everyone who had won was on Sebago at some point. Um, so those were the six of us that were safe, which left, uh, Callie, Amelia, Topher, Dave and missing one per oh TJ who were not safe. Okay. Um, and I knew right away Dave. Um, I was like, not only is he <laughs> one of the few people who aren't safe who slighted me because Nick, Allison, and Zach were all safe. Um, he also personally hurt my feelings on yeah. my birthday. And on my I birthday. Came in on my fucking birthday. And I was like, Dave has played all of these games. He's such a liar. He knows how to make fire. He knows me very well. And I just was like, you know what? You didn't even tell me to play my shot in the dark. So I was like, Dave's a liar. And I don't know if I even needed to do that to get the votes <laughs> on him, but I had a hell of a fun time doing it. <laughs> so that was my first order of business, but also kind of it was such a weird feeling being safe and having all of the people who just voted me out come up to me and try and make amends and be like, I'm so proud of you. Um, because you know that I now have information and not only my own information and my own vendetta, but everyone else on exile who I just came out with and just spent the night with and just swapped stories with. And so it was a very weird feeling having everyone come up to me because I knew it was all fake. Yeah. Um, and I, although I will say, and I said this to people, I think in Ponderosa, I'd much rather someone pretend to play the game with me than not even attempt to like lie or like pretend to strategize. So I did appreciate like Nick, Topher, um, Zach even came up to me, Allison, and we're like, all right, let's just get back to strategy. Um, Dave pulled me aside on a personal note, which he should have done. And I'm happy he did, but then it ended there and he didn't talk strategy with me mm. and his neck was on the chopping block. So I was like, okay, I guess you're just going to apologize. And then, uh, we're not going to play together. I, I was very confused. And then Callie, also the whole game, Callie did not come up to me once mm. and every time i talked to callie it was very i don't know i don't know let me get back to you um and i get it that's people's you know someone's personality but for me yeah. it feels very much like i'm not interested in what you're saying i don't feel comfortable sharing my own thoughts with you and i was very much so like all right we're just not chit chatting but everyone else i felt like was coming up to me um and, you know, I felt like that was a great start to ingratiating myself back on the tribe. So it wasn't a terrible round. And I liked having the power and I liked being like, Zach is an idol. Dave's a big liar. Ah. <laughs> so you <laughs> got to time. tell people all, all, all the secrets. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't even tactful with it. I just <laughs> was like, who wants information? I've got it. Because, again, at this point. I'd already been through the ups and downs of being voted out and I just wanted to be a bit of a menace. And so I was like, let's just have fun. Um, so I feel like a bit of my strategy went out the window mm -hmm. um, post me coming back in the game. Um, but it also kind of helped. And I, you know, um, in succession took out 
three of the six people who voted me out. Yeah. So that was, that was also a great moment. Tell me about this vote where Topher goes out then. Um, mm. Cause I know it's, um, all I know about this is what Addison told me. And, you know, Addison wasn't in on every strategy talk or confessional. Right. So what happened with all that? So it turns out a conversation that I thought went really well with Topher was full of shit. And then he <laughs> changed his mind and decided he actually did want to side with me. Um, I think because of Adam, which is a huge theme in this season. Um, but we'll, I'll come back to that. Okay. Um, so I felt actually really good with Topher, even though in the moment he apparently was lying. Um, I also, you know, talked to Nick and Nick was like, I like Zach, but we did have like a good conversation, even though I'm anti Zach at this point and <laughs> from here on out. Um, but so I had a great conversation with Nick and then I come to Seth and I'm like, Seth, I know you're mad at Adam for the Madison vote, but Sandra really thinks we can trust Adam and that he's Sebago strong. And I was like, we're all safe. I'm like, you, me and Adam can come together and like continue working as three remaining original Sebago. Um, so I, I, I give myself credit for getting Zach or um, Adam and Seth back together, at least on working terms. Mm -hmm. um, and we voted together for, you know, the next three rounds. Okay. Um, and so Adam has the secret connection <clears throat> with Topher and with Callie. And yeah. blanket statement, I'm in the LRG world. I know people know each other. Um, I know that plays a big factor. I didn't know four people knew hmm. each other. Um, <clears throat> and I think there's a difference between like Sandra and Allison having played a game together and me and Dave having played a game together. And being literal friends from college and roommates yeah. is a very different level of game loyalty. And the fact that they kept this a secret until after Final Tribal. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy you're annoyed because it validates <laughs> my vote out, which we'll get to. Um, it makes me feel a whole heck of a lot better about my vote and my read on the situation. Okay. Um because if it weren't for Adam and Callie having such a good secret alliance, I don't know if I would have been the vote or what would have happened there. Mm. Um, but so Adam can rally Callie and Topher to do whatever he wants. And I feel great about Seth. And I, I told everyone, I was like, I am not voting for Callie or Amelia we just watched five women go out back to back. And if it wasn't for me in here, three tenths of this would, or seven tenths of this would be men. And I was like, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, so it was pretty much just Dave or Topher at, and TJ as the options, but TJ wasn't really up for consideration. I feel like it was all around Dave or Topher. Or is it because and they were seen as bigger threats? Um, I honestly don't remember why. I personally just had my tunnel vision on Dave. Yeah. So I don't know anyone else's reasoning. Uh, <laughs> and then I don't, I think they wanted just like a moose head gone. Mm. Um, that could have been the reason Topher, because Zach and Allison, um, they didn't want to vote Dave. Um, so they were the camp voting for Topher. Um, so somehow between, I think, Adam's secret alliances, and his pull from his swap tribe. And then my few people I felt close with and just my very loud rally the troops against Dave cry. Um, we somehow got the numbers, but freaking Adam. And another reason why I try not to give them too much personal credit and I give more credit to them just knowing each other. Yeah. Because Adam tells Zach why... Zach blindsided me, still has an idol, and very clearly is working with them, and just had three rounds with them, hasn't talked to you in half a day, and you're going to tell Zach we're voting for Dave? Mm -hmm. And so that was the reason Zach even had the foresight 
to play his idol Mm -hmm. is no one said shit to him. And even if he had gotten the whisperings, it wasn't a definitive, these people are voting for Dave. So I was very salty. I do blame (laughs) Adam for tipping off Zach um, and that idol getting played and Topher going out, which was a bit of a shame because I do feel like Topher, Nick, Callie, all of those original Mooseheads who were on the Swap Sebago, even though they voted for me, I really liked them. Like as people, they had a cool vibe um, and I wanted to play with them. Um, But, you know, in hindsight, I am glad Topher went because otherwise Topher, Adam and Callie all in like the final nine as a third of the the members would have been unhinged, truly, like pure power. I would have not even, I would have boycotted the season and said, edit it yourself, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, and then after that, it was pretty clear, like, okay, Zach, Zach was a very easy name after he played that idol for Dave. He he drew the lines with Adam. I don't know why Adam thought he was working with him, Mm. but that pissed Adam off. It was just an easy name easy target. He just did a big move. He doesn't have an idol anymore. Um, And so I think that vote was pretty easy. And then, you know, three rounds later, after I come back in and Dave is still freaking here. Yeah. I I can't really put into words why I was drawn to Nick or why I literally destroyed my game for that man, but I had a great time doing it. Um, and I'm happy I did it, but I just don't, I was just drawn to him. And when they were like, me too, I, in our, in a, <laughs> he's, he's so There's cute something about him in the, you know, pregame interviews, I was like, I really like this guy. Why do I, I like him so much? <laughs> and he's so blunt. He was like, Zach, I don't trust you. I don't want to talk to you in front of me. And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, he's the one who voted me out. Um, but yeah, uh, Zach playing that idol for Dave really pissed a lot of people off um, awesome. and worked in my favor because I didn't like either. Well, I like them both personally, but in the game, I didn't like either of them. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so anyways, I was really drawn to Nick. And so when I hear it's between Nick and Callie, because they want to get rid of the moose head and Nick is the primary option, because of course, Adam doesn't want to freaking vote for Callie, obviously. (laughs) Um, So I'm kind of like, well, I'd rather be Callie. And Adam's like, well, I'd rather be Nick. And I don't even know if Adam was serious in this conversation, but I talked to TJ and I talked to Allison and I'm like, I'm hearing Callie or Nick. I don't care which one, but I didn't want either of them to go. Um, Again, I was still on the, I'm not writing a woman's name down train right now. We're not even close to even numbers. Um, And I'm just obsessed with Nick. Why are those the two options? Mm -hmm. Why isn't, you know, any of these, uh, why isn't TJ an option? Why not Dave again? I was so confused. Um, And so I go to Nick and I'm like, maybe I'm stupid for telling you this, but I'm pretty sure it's you. They said they want to split the votes for three, you and Callie. And I was like, we got to make a move. And so I don't know how much of this was like Nick scared Callie because he told her. Um, I don't know how much that played into her thoughts. Um, But we did tell her that TJ, who she thought she was really close with, suggested splitting four, three on her and Nick. Okay, And she didn't, she did not take that amazingly. I don't know who would. Um, so somehow it comes back on Dave. I don't credit myself with it. I Um, don't know if I was a potential target. I don't know. Um, but it's Dave and I'm like, I'm not going to fight this. It can be (laughs) Dave. I've been wanting it to be Dave. So that vote was weird. Um, but pretty easy when we actually like went to vote. I don't think anything hinky happened that round. Mm -hmm. Allison might've put, you know what? That's the round Allison found the idol on the fly trap, had two idols. And Allison, played- Allison had two. Yes. Okay. I know that Allison, Al- did Allison play an idol like back to back rounds? She, you know, did she play it the round I went? I think she did. She played it the round Dave went for herself because she thought we were all lying to her about it being Dave. 
and she wasn't sure she was going to play hers. And then apparently when she went up to vote, she saw it hanging on the fly sticky paper. Okay. Fly trap. So then she had two idols and was like, well, F it. I don't feel good. I'm going to play it for myself. Okay. And so didn't need to play it at all. Um, but she still had an idol. So I think that's at least what she said to us in Ponderosa. And mm-hmm. then I can't remember if she played her idol on my vote. She must have because she was the other name. Oh. Um, yes. So so then it's the stupid tangram puzzle. Uh, <laughs> and I should have just not said anything and just let other people self-eliminate because essentially if you got one wrong, you were out of the challenge. But if you just never called it and you let someone else call it and be wrong, which is what happened with uh-huh. um, TJ and Allison, both just did nothing and made it to the final round, um, which thank God Seth won that. Um, <laughs> but so I could have potentially won immunity there and I like dropped the ball. Um, But I felt good because I 100% had Seth. And at this point, I had helped Nick not be the vote two votes in a row. So I 100% had Nick. And Nick felt so strong with Callie. So that's four of us out of eight. That's that's half the votes. We just need one vote. And I have four shot in the darks in my pocket, which equals an extra vote. Mm -hmm. So I felt okay. Um, and I tell Nick about it, who then tells Callie about it, about my four shot in the darks and it being an extra vote. And I'm a dum dum. Mm. At no point over the last two days did I reread the shot in the dark paper. Um, I only oh. read, it, read it the once when we first got it. Um, and I was like, I know four is, um, an extra vote, which it is. But it's a vote bank. You have to give up your vote this time and for an extra vote next time. I'm like, that is helpful to literally zero people. Okay. Yeah. Right? That is a <laughs> shit four fire token advantage. I don't care yeah. what bridges I'm burning saying this. I Burn hate it. it all. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. <laughs> I, um, I That was such a goofy, like for four, that should have been for like two. I was like, that's not entirely helpful, but I'm sitting here thinking I, okay, I have Seth. I have Nick. Nick has Callie. We can vote whoever we want. Again, not knowing Adam and Callie are besties. Um, I put a lot of faith in that. We choose Allison or Callie chooses Allison. Um, but Callie was never with us. Callie was with Adam um, who also knew I had the shot in the dark. So mm-hmm. in hindsight, Callie like, <laughs> probably already knew anyways. Um, and so we go up to vote and I'm so confident the front row is Allison, TJ, Adam, and Amelia. And then the back row is the other four of us. So we were split in our alliances um, at vote at tribal. And I go up to vote and I'm about to be all dramatic and pull four shot in the darks out of my shirt And they have the paper and I'm like, oh shit. I was like, I can't play this as an extra vote. So in my head, I'm like, all right, I have four. I can play, is it three? I think I can play three as a 50-50 or I can do nothing. And it can be a four, four. Because in my mind, Nick was so confident he had Callie. So in my mind, and the, and they also think that I'm playing the extra vote. So they feel super confident we have five votes. I'm the only person shitting bricks here. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, if we have four votes and I don't vote and I play the 50-50, it's now four, three, four on me. And if the 50-50 doesn't land, I'm automatically the person going home. Mm-hmm. Or I think I have Callie. It's 4-4. Four, four. We tie. I don't use the extra vote. It's a tied vote. I, in my head, was like someone will flip on me, especially since I'm the dumbass that didn't play the extra vote. But I, in my mind, that felt like less of a gamble and potentially going to rocks and being fully safe. Mm-hmm. It felt, felt less risky than doing the 50-50 and 
because it wasn't like I knew I was going home. It, I didn't know the majority was on me. And if I did, I would have played the 50, 50. Um, but with the possibility of it being a tie that felt like the safer, more strategic option to save my shot in the darks and just bank on it being a tie, or I really assumed it was a tie clearly was not. Um, but before the votes even are read, when Liza goes to tally them and I'm like whispering to Nick and I'm like, I fucked up and I'm like, give me your bag. And I like pull them out of my shirt and I give him all four. And I was like, I bet you I'm going home. Um, and I had this feeling and, you know, when I was sitting up there in that voting booth, I, I knew 50-50 probably was the, like, more logical option. Mm -hmm. But something in me just, like, came to terms with this being my last round. And I don't know what it is about Nick, but I just fought for him, like, three <laughs> rounds in a row. And I, I was like, I'd rather not waste three shot in the darks and maybe still go home. And... I just wanted to give them to Nick and I wanted them to be played in like a, I wanted to be like, how did someone get six? <laughs> I wanted like my social prowess and being able to pass that on to be something that could be told in a story in the show. Um, and I was like, that just seems more fun rather than wasting three out of four of them now, potentially still going home and then like not having anything to my name. So I was kind of fine with it. And I give Nick my shot in the darks and I was like, I bet you I'm going home. But in my like last, you know, moment of gameplay gifted them to him. So now he had five and I was like, all he needs to do is come together with Seth or Callie and get one more. And they have an idol. And I was like, I'm happy to leave you with this. So I, I did my battle back. I had my emotional day. I was like, <laughs> give me a shower. I'm good. I I got to experience all of Survivor outside that was of the same day. Holy that shit. That was that same day. It <laughs> oh, was a man. long it's a long day. So I was like, I'm good. I really was at peace with going out there. And I think that played to like me just gifting the shot in the darks and not even like trying out of desperation to save myself. Plus I'm the one who's an idiot. So, <laughs> you know, why did I deserve to be saved? <laughs> oh, but I, I'm glad I could have done that for Nick. And then the twist. And then I got, that was um, the double. That was um, the first round of the double. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So then they let me know that I get to vote. I get to just pick who gets immunity, immunity in, yeah. the, in the like pop-up tribal, um, which I was like, wow, I'm really just picking the best rounds to go out here. And I was <laughs> like, if anything, like I just get to keep, you know, messing with the game. So I was happy to have been able to get to do that. Who did you pick? Um, so I picked Nick. Um, I was up there really torn between Nick and Seth, but Seth yeah. just had immunity and Nick was the target like round after round after round. And at that point, when you get down to seven and this was voting for six, um, people like Seth, players like Seth, not, I don't want to call out his personality, players like Seth, um, who are a little bit more reserved when you make it to six, seven, six, I feel like you have a better chance. I feel like getting there is harder because you're always the easy first vote. Yeah. But when you get there, no one wants to get rid of you. Yeah. Um. And so in my mind, I felt like I was doing that group a favor by choosing Nick over Seth. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, in my like, I'm a dumbass, like mind set when my votes were being read, I didn't count and realize that Callie flipped. Um, Callie was never on my list. It was really just between Nick and Seth, but um, I that might have changed. I might have gifted it to Seth instead of Nick if I knew that. Um, but I'm kind of glad that it worked out the way it did. Um, so I gave it to Nick because Seth just had it. And then I was also like, Nick has five shot in the darks. And I feel like he's going to be more willing to give it to Seth or Callie mm. with the safety around his neck mm. versus 
he would want to use it himself, but I don't know if getting a fire token or a shot in the dark would have been as easy as just, I know Nick is, would have just given those. Um, so then when Callie whips out her idol when for Seth, um, I thought that was my shot in the dark birth um. idol. Um, <laughs> So I was super excited. And then Topher was like, no, she's had that since hour one. She stole it from Aaron. And I was like, (laughs) well, good for her, I guess. I wish it was like my, like, I wish in spirit, I had just saved both Nick and Seth in one foul swoop. Um, (laughs) It was a beautiful moment that she played Aaron's idol for Seth. I'm like, you also blindsided his best friend and stole his <laughs> idol. So good for you. Uh, no, but um, that was a fun like way to end that night. Um, I think TJ went out that round. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about anything else before I ask you about your vote at final tribal? Hmm. You know, I don't, I don't think so. I think the main thing that I want other players to know, watchers to know is that, you know, I played my game intentionally. Um, I wanted to be a villain. I wanted to be entertaining. I definitely didn't have all the knowledge. Um, I do think a huge portion of that is secret um, alliances of roommates from Boston. Um, I definitely like read that wrong. And in my gut, in my gut, I was like, why the Frick are Adam and Callie talking at like final nine, final eight. I was like, they haven't even been on a tribe together. Right. We've never strategized in a group together. They've Damn. been talking for so long. <laughs> and I just, they both were like newbies to the LRG space. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't a lie. So it didn't even cross my mind that they could have known each other. I, I think we said it on Exile. I don't know if it's on tape. Um, and it's funny because I think Kiefer was there if it was on Exile. Um, but I think I said, I like, what if Callie is Adam's girlfriend? <laughs> um, which, not the case, but not they the do case. obviously know each other. And I'm pretty sure I said that on Exile in front of Kiefer, um, which is also hilarious. So <laughs> I, basically, I'm proud of my game. I'm proud of my battle backstory. Um I got to be the villain I wanted to be, but I wasn't like a mean person, but, um, <laughs> you know, I still had a lot of fun awesome. and I'm, I'm glad I had my mental, my mental break. <laughs> it a was, really well-rounded experience. Yes. That's, that's what I'm most proud of. I definitely <laughs> got to experience all of Survivor in that three, four day window. It was so great to talk to you and hear your whole story. You had the best, most well-rounded game of the season, right? Yes. Yes. Thank (laughs) you. I appreciate you letting me vent about all of the ups and downs. And I'm just so grateful. I, I literally got to experience anything you could want in terms of playing Survivor outside of winning. But you know, uh, other than that, I just really had the best time and it was really moving, honestly, which I didn't think it would be, but, um, yeah, but thanks for, you know, setting this up and letting me vent for an hour and a half. I had a great time. Of course. All right, Lauren, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.